Hello viewers, welcome to the Dateline Northeast, a program that gives an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I am your host Chandrakala and the highlights of today's program are US investors keen on investing expand trade links in Northeast. Seminar on Act is policy held in Manipur emphasized on skill development. Sport events held in Nagaland to boost sporting culture. And Northeast Handicrafts shine at ISGF Autumn Fair in New Delhi. India's Northeast region has immense potential to become one of the most sought after tourism hotspot and many foreign investors are eyeing on to invest and expand business relations with the region's different sectors with more focus on tourism which has cast a spell in the global tourism map. Recently, US Ambassador Kenneth Justa visited the northeastern state of Tripura and explored the state's potential and discussed on the need to improve infrastructure in the region. On a similar note, three officials from Embassy of America visited to Imphal to explore ways and means of developing border trade. Let's have a look. There is no denying the fact that India's northeast region is blessed with abundant natural resources and to explore the unexplored is always a profitable business. Realizing its immense investment potential, many foreign investors are eyeing the region for amplifying investments, especially in the tourism sector. Recently, U.S. Ambassador to India Kenneth Jasta was on a two-day maiden visit to Tripura where he discussed ways and means to improve infrastructure in the northeast region. Further, after visiting various tourist spots including the famous Nirmahal, Tripura State Museum in the state, Jaster expressed that the state and the region have huge tourism potential, but for that, infrastructure development is a prerequisite. It's a wonderful tour here of the State Museum. We're going to go into the border very shortly. We also visited the power plant uh, and we had a beautiful cultural exhibit last night. Uh, at dinner time. So it's really been a memorable trip and from my perspective this is a wonderful part of India and I'm hoping that the United States can increase its economic activity and interaction with the northeast of India. During his visit, the U.S. envoy met Chief Minister of Tripura Biplab Kumar Dev and discussed issues pertaining to business, connectivity and Indo-U.S. relations. Later, the U.S. envoy, along with few officials, visited the India-Bangladesh border at Akora and observed the beating retreat ceremony between the two countries' border guards, BSF and BGP, and appreciated the contribution made by the border guards in safeguarding the nations. Now, it's been wonderful to be here today to see the connectivity in the region between India and Bangladesh and the contribution that the United States has made. When I visited the power plant today, there were GE engines that were driving the power system. And that, I think, is an example of how we can work together in partnership to increase the regional connectivity. And it's really wonderful to see the relationship between India and Bangladesh and how this is a friendly border where people can go back and forth easily. So it's been a most enjoyable day, and I'm delighted to be here. Tourism is the best thing for जो इनको डर भय ना रहे लॉ एंड ऑर्डर लॉ एंड ऑर्डर ठीक है और लोगों का व्यवहार ठीक है तो टूरिस्ट मेरे पास जो है वो देखने के लिए आएगा है आपके पास मेरे पास उनुकुटी है किसी के पास है क्या नहीं है तो क्यों नहीं देखने के लिए आएगा वो उसको एक्सपोजर देना पड़ता है सरकार का ड्यूटी है सरकार उस दिशा में काम कर रहा है और जरूर जो अमेरिकन एम्बेसडर ने कहा है जो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का जरूरत है तो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का एक दिन में इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर तैयार नहीं होता किंतु बिहेवियर चेंज करने में दो साल नहीं लगता वो सात दिन प्रैक्टिस करने से आ जाती है On a similar note, three officials from embassy from America visited Manipur's capital Imphal to explore the ways and means of developing border trade as well as take a keen interest in developing infrastructure as a priority in the state. The team comprised of Robert Gerverick, Minister Council Economic Environment, Science and Technology Affairs, and Geoffrey Wessel, Trade and Connectivity Officer of Embassy of United States of America. The U.S. Embassy in New Delhi, uh, we have been working very closely with the government of India uh, on a whole variety of, of economic uh, development programs on trade and investment 
Uh, also looking at uh, environment, science, and technology cooperation. Moreover, the U.S. investors are also looking forward to opportunities to invest in the Northeast, and GE engines are one of the sectors which topped the priority list along with a few other aspects. As India is heading towards becoming the world's fastest growing economy by 2020, the northeastern province of Manipur is poised on the threshold of an exciting phase of economic activities under the actors' policy of the central government. With a aim to enhance the skills of the youths, Manipur recently organized a seminar on skilling the youth in the wake of India's actors' policy from northeast perspective. We bring you a report. As rightly said by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the progress of India's Northeast is at the heart of the Act East policy of the government. Moreover, the youths of the region have immense potential to highly contribute to the implementation of the Act East policy. In line with that, in an endeavor to enhance the skills and to identify and develop the skills of youths with the forthcoming of the Act East policy, Manipur recently conducted a seminar on skilling the youth in the wake of India's Act East policy from the Northeast perspective at the Manipur State Assembly Auditorium. The seminar was organized by Integrated Talent Development Mission Blooming Northeast. With the arrival of the policy, the Northeast region will not only enhance the Indian economy, but will also cultivate two-sided assimilation among the East and Southeast Asian neighbors. Well, I feel it's a very good uh, program because finally this is only a basis of it, to identify different areas where we can train our youth. But the basic program would be when we start the training program, like I said, language laboratories should be there. They can learn different languages, Burmese language, Chinese language. Then it's about the administration, how to do the economics, how to do the financial inclusions of the people, how to train them. As India is heading towards becoming the world's fastest growing economy and is expected to become the youngest country by 2020, with 64% of its population in the working age group, the center has ambitious plans to transform India into a competitive, high growth, high productivity, middle income country by using this young workforce, which accounts to only 2.3%, receiving some formal skill training at present. The program also highlighted various schemes taken by the Centre for the benefit of the youth of the country such as Pradhan Mantri Koshal Vikas Yojana, Skill India, which is to train over 40 crore people in India in different skills by 2022 and Stand Up India, which is a scheme to support entrepreneurship among women and people who belong to scheduled tribe and caste. We have technical resource persons here. And uh, a very important person is also here, which will really be helpful for our youths to get employment through skill development, through his solutions, through his uh, productions, through his industry. He gives employment to many of the youths, and the many resourceful persons are here who, is, who are renowned professors who can give the knowledge to our, us to initiate. To initiate in such a way, we can find more employment. As the Northeast region is considered as a business gateway of Southeast Asian countries, skilled workforce has become the need of the hour in the region. As the trade and commerce are booming in the region due to connectivity with ASEAN and China, the youth of the region need to get skill development training in the relevant field to support the cross-border trade and business. Nagaland government has taken a lot of steps in bringing adequate infrastructure and training facilities to groom budding players in the Northeast. To aggravate the sporting culture in the state and nurture youths, various championships and training camps are being held at the state level more frequently. Let's have a look. In order to nurture the skills of young, talented sportspersons in Nagaland, the government is putting in efforts to improve the sporting culture of the region by rolling out various sports projects and policies. To inculcate the spirit of sports amongst the youngsters in the region, various championships are being organized in the state frequently. Recently, Dimapur hosted the Northeast Zone Interstate Badminton Championship, organized under the initiative of Nagaland Badminton Association at Dimapur District Badminton Association. 
Nagaland Chief Minister Nephew Rio inaugurated the championship and reiterated that his government will soon roll out a sports policy wherein various sporting disciplines suitable to the people of this state will be identified and promoted. The championship saw participation of over 150 students. This tournament has been actually uh, hosted by the Nagaland Badminton Association and in all eight states have represented and where about 150 players including 100 officials from all the uh, northern states and the Badminton Association of India have come to give us this uh, hand holding. We are grateful to all the state for participating in this tournament. The first set witnessed a neck-to-neck -neck match between the two teams with Manipur pair going ahead by two points at 14-12. The points drew level at 16-16, after which the Manipur pair won three points on the trot to make it 19-16. Mizoram clawed their way back to make it 19-18, but the Manipur pair won the next two points, closing the first set 21-18. We are very happy we get the champion, so uh, we we get very excited. We don't uh, we don't think that we get in front because we don't practice very well. Mm. But because of our Lord, mm. uh, we enter the final. Thank you very much, and we will try best for the next tournament also. Whereas in another event, 20 young Nagas in the age group of 11 to 18 years and mostly from a poor background undergoing vigorous training at the Nagaland Boxing Academy in Dhamapur. Working hard here since three years and I find good practicing. It's good with Memaran and she shows us different techniques. She supports us. Even though we feel weak, she determines us and makes us strong. The young boxers, including six girls, are temporarily being lodged at a state youth hostel near Dhamapur railway station. In spite of the poor infrastructure and training equipment, the trainees are happy and working hard every morning and evening. We choose from under 15. Maximum should be 15. But we prefer from 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years. They are, some of them, they have been in this academy since uh, three, four years back. So some of them are 18 years old. So it's like after two, three years, if they are not performing well, we, we send them back and then we get a new boxer. A nationally renowned boxing coach, Sung Chet Rinla, has high expectations and is also happy to train the young boys. She has led Indian women boxing team to tournaments in Kazakhstan, Serbia, etc. as a coach. Although most of these young boxers are from financially backward villages, they are determined and working hard to achieve their goals in the field of sports. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. In a recent blast that occurred near Sukleshwar Ghat in Guwahati, four people, including a woman, were reportedly injured. The wounded were immediately taken to the MMC hospital for medical treatment. Assam Director General of Police Kuladhar Saikya said an explosive device caused the blast at around 11.44 a.m. at construction material dump site near a footpath in Pan Bazar, which is one of the most crowded places in Guwahati. The centre is seeking a proposal from the state government of Meghalaya to establish Cocoon Bank in the state, as it will help the reelers and the reeling units of the states and make available the raw materials throughout the year. The Ministry of Textiles assured adequate fund that will be allotted for Cocoon Bank. This was informed by Ajay Tamta, Union Minister of State for Textiles, while visiting one of the oldest sericulture units in Shillong. Established in 1925, this unit is providing sericulture seeds to the farmers and promoting it. To promote and preserve the silk cultivation from animal intrusion, the Ministry of Textiles is also taking initiatives in providing solar fencing as well. The Manipur High Court recently appointed Administrator of Manipur University, Janil Singh, retired IAS and former Chief Secretary of Manipur as an Administrator at Manipur University at the Vice Chancellor's Hall. The administrator was warmly received and welcomed by the teachers and staffs community of Manipur University along with the Manipur University Students' Union. 
Jarnal Singh during his speech assured that he will give his best shot in solving the present Manipur crisis and will be meeting everyone at their respective departments. Chief Minister of Assam Sarbanand Sonwal flagged off Row Row, Roll On, Roll Off ferry service between Majuli and Nimati Ghat in Assam. The vessel, which is 46.50 meters long and 13.30 meter wide, has a carrying capacity of 8 trucks and 100 passengers. Inland Waterways Authority of India, in association with the state government, has launched this service named MV Bhupanazarika at a cost of Rs 9.46 crore. On the occasion of the International Day for Disaster Reduction, held annually, the Revenue Department of Tripura recently organized a procession of communities to spread awareness that can reduce the exposure to disasters. International Day for Disaster Reduction encourages every individual, community and government to take part in building more disaster-resilient communities and nations. A pledge on reducing the economic losses from disasters and to transform lives and contribute greatly to the eradication of poverty was read out, followed by a flag off of the rally by the State Revenue Minister N.C. Dev Burma. The aim of International Day emphasizes the reduction by 2030 of disaster-related economic losses relative to the gross domestic product. The Northeast region has produced tons of promising sports stars for the country. It has made the country proud and it has empowered many enthusiast sports persons, especially women. The 27th Senior National Wushu Championship was recently held in Shillong to encourage more young players to delve in such sports activities. Amidst all the traditional martial art forms, Wushu, or more popularly known as the Chinese Kung Fu, is gaining momentum in the region and more youngsters are opting for such sports activity. Recently, to promote Wushu among the budding players, Shillong hosted the 27th Senior National Wushu Men and Women Championship 2018 held under the aegis of Assam Regimental Center. The function was graced by Meghalaya Governor Tathagata Roy. I pray for success and glory to all of you and implore you to continue the process of nation building, national integration, Wushu is a Chinese word that describes the Chinese martial art similar to Kung Fu. Wu means military and Shu means art. In fact, both Kung Fu and Wushu were once considered to be the same thing. A total of 38 teams of various states and union territories, which includes 610 men players and 292 women players, participated in the championship. In Wushu Sancho technique, SSCB were victorious, followed by All India Police and Jammu and Kashmir. In Taulu technique, the team from Manipur was victorious, followed by SSCB and Delhi. Service Sports Control Board, SSCP of Assam Regimental Center, lifted overall team trophy at the 27th Senior National Wushu Men and Women Championship 2018. It, however, deserves a special mention that the Army and Services Wushu Note of the Assam Regimental Center together have been producing world-class athletes. The overall championship trophy was won by Services Sports Control Board, SSCB, and the same was received by GOC 101 area from the Governor of Meghalaya. <laughs>
as the country has made commendable strides in various fields of sports, organizing such championship will go a long way in keeping up sporting culture in the Northeast region and also motivate more young players to grow professionally in the field of sports. Such championship also further strengthened women empowerment to achieve better development. Moving on, handlooms and handicrafts form an integral part of the lifestyle of the indigenous people of Northeast region. Crafted goods and magic weaves are a means of livelihood for numerous artisans scattered all over the region. Recently, the national capital hosted the 46th edition of IHGF Autumn Fair that saw a host of exhibitors and manufacturers from across the country putting their craft on display. The fair brought the most exquisite handloom and handicraft products of the Northeast region to overseas buyers. Let's have a look. India's Northeast is undoubtedly a land of immense potential and possibilities. Its people, along with its rich cultural heritage, makes the region all the more exceptional. When it comes to handloom and handicrafts, the Northeast region boasts of rich varieties of handlooms products. Recently, the 46th edition of the IHGF Delhi Fair Autumn 2018 in New Delhi brought to light the intricate designs and hand-woven motifs from the Northeast region. As many as 3,200 manufacturers and exhibitors participated in the fair and showcased 2,000 products, lines, style, raw material base and concepts to overseas buyers. Among various other states, exhibitors from the eight northeastern states including Assam, Manipur, Nagaland, Mizoram, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh took part in the fair. These products uh, uh, introduced uh, we here from 2005 onwards. This uh, product name is uh, the material is water hyacinth and Kona. It is all natural fiber from Assam, Sipsagar district, Junnagar, Bhutiapar. So we started this journey from 2005 onwards with more than 500 women, village women artisans. A lot of changes I have just brought here. All these uh, village women, uh, this, as this is a natural fiber product, so it is made by our village artisans and their livelihood is also improved through this project. And a lot, lot of designs are changed according to the buyer's taste. Products ranging from handloom bamboo items including bags, home decor items, intricately designed lamps, baskets to name a few were put on display by the exhibitors from Assam. The fair focused on a range of eco-friendly products made out of base material like wood, metal, glass, can, bamboo, textile made of natural fibers, wool, silk, jute, coir, stone, leather, terracotta, lac and dry flowers. Besides these, the fair boasted of an extensive range of handicrafted products in a range of categories like home textile, furnishing, carpet, fashion jewellery and many others. Uh, this is my first time to participate in this uh, exhibition. The buyers, uh, they, they are visiting us, so hopefully we will also get some uh, this is uh, this organization especially for women because a lot of women are getting employment in this uh, organization. So like, uh, right from uh, rain of silk room, spinning and weaving group. So a lot of good people involved in this uh, work, uh, about uh, 50 people are engaged in this activity. The exquisite range of hand-woven with a slight of modern touch painted Naga outfits and Manipur-based black pottery made of clay also attracted overseas buyers and has over the years gained prominence in international markets. The fair attracted buyers from 110 countries including Benin, Fiji, Latvia, Rwanda and Dominican Republic. Well, we are very impressed because the number of exhibitors it's a very large fair and um, we can tell there's quality and then the, we've seen a lot of uh, very new designs as well. So we are very impressed actually. Yeah. Organizing such a fair not only helps boosting business perspective of the handicraft sector but acts as a platform for artisans and weavers of the country to showcase their product in the global markets which thereby will improve income generation of people, especially rural women artisans. 
Well, as the entire country celebrates Durga Puja, one of the India's most awaited festivals, Northeast region is also soaking in the vibrant festive fervor. The four-day festival marks the victory of Durga over the evil buffalo demon king Maheshashura. We bring you a report. Every year, India comes alive with the celebration of Durga Puja. The fever has crept country's northeast region too. People across the region are celebrating the four-day festival dedicated to Hindu goddess Durga, synonymous with power and feminine power. The streets of Assam's Guwahati city are wearing a festive look as it is decked out with fancy lights, decorative chandeliers all around. Visitors have been thronging pandals, marquees, designed with different themes and messages across the city, offering prayers and seeking blessings from Goddess Durga. Also known as Durga Tsov in the northeast region, the festival marks the victory of Durga over Buffalo demon king Mahesha Shura. Durga Puja epitomizes the victory of good over evil. Markets have been flooded with fashionable outfits and decorative items and lights during the festival. This year's celebration of Durga Puja is witnessing huge footfall of visitors from the nooks and corners of the country because of the 80 tall Fed Bharat Pata statue in the Vishnupur area of the city that is being touted as one of the major destinations for tourists. On the other hand, devotees are seen thronging the famous Kamakya temple situated atop Nilachal Hill in Guwahati, especially during the Mahasaptami. माँ के पास आने के बाद से एक नई ज्योति हमको मिली है पहले दिन से ही हम यहाँ तपस्या कर रहे हैं और एक असीम शक्ति की अनुभूति यहाँ पर रहते हुए मुझे हो रही है और बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है यह एक बहुत ही दिव्य तपस्थली है जिसकी जिसका वर्णन शब्दों से नहीं किया जा सकता Durga Puja festivities grip Tripura with the weather improving after heavy rains. This year, theme pujas have been arranged by few clubs and one such puja pandal has been arranged by Blue Lotus Club, which has made its pandal in the shape of Tripura state fruit queen pineapple. Meanwhile, Dandia dance fervor added to the enjoyment of Durga Puja as the dancers strike the wooden stakes rhythmically in the tune of the music, thereby encircling a lighted pole in the rhythm of the dance. Durga Puja is most commonly referred to as Navratri in northern and western parts of India. Millions of Hindus fast and offer prayers to please the goddess during this festival. Some restrict their diet to fruits and vegetables, burning meat, onions and garlic. Well, viewers, with that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. To connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at nindia underscore ani, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host, Chandra Kala, signing off. Goodbye and take care.